Hi, I'm Jesus Ramirez from the Photoshop Training Channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an amazing duotone double exposure effect in Photoshop. Let's get right to it. If you're following along with your own images, make sure that they're from the same series. They don't have to be, but I think the tutorial will be a lot easier to understand if they are. If you want to use the same images that I'm using, then look down below in the description. I place links to Adobe Stock where you can download the watermark version and practice with those. Okay, let's get started. These are my photos. They're from the same series. The first step is to place both photos in the same Photoshop document. You can do so with the Move Tool active. First, select the layer and click and drag it over onto the first documents tab. Then when the tab switches over, you could release your mouse button to place the photo in this document. If you disable the top layer, you'll notice that these photos are not aligned. The next step will be to align them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select dancer number two, hold shift and select dancer number one. Then going into edit, auto align layers. From here, all you need to do is just select auto, press OK and let Photoshop align the images for you. Notice that Photoshop made the canvas larger so that we could see all the pixels in both photos. Also, Photoshop distorted the images so that they would align. I'm going to double click on the hand tool just to fit the image to screen. And I can show you how these two layers line up. And you can actually see that the artist who created this photo did some cloning or healing in these areas. And maybe even a little bit of liquify on this area here. But anyway, that's not really important. I just wanted to show you that. The next step is to remove any noticeable seams. We have a noticeable seam here on top. To remove that seam, first create a layer mask by clicking on the layer mask icon, then select the brush tool. And from the options bar, click on this down pointing arrow and drag the hardness down to zero. And with black as your foreground color, paint over the seam and the layer mask will hide it. And it's okay if I painted that away. We're gonna crop that in a moment. If you have any more areas with seams in your image, go ahead and take care of them by doing exactly the same thing. I don't have any more, so I'm going to move on. Next, I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool, click and drag on this top part and go into edit, copy merge. The reason that I'm copying this area is so that I can paste it over the transparent pixels in this layer. I'm going to press control V on Windows, command V on the Mac to paste. Next, I need to combine these two layers into one, and you can do so by pressing Ctrl E on Windows, Command E on the Mac to merge. Since I have a layer mask, Photoshop will ask me if I want to preserve or apply the layer mask. In this case, I want to apply it. And now I have a layer that has all those pixels on top. Now I need to add the pixels here on this bottom layer. So I'm going to make a selection, enable the dancer number two, and go into Edit. Copy Merge, Control V, Command V on the Mac to paste, and I'll drag that piece above Dancer number one, and I'll merge it down by pressing Control E, Command E on the Mac. So now I have all the pixels visible in both layers. What I'm gonna do now is select the Crop tool and click and drag on these handles to crop the image and hide those imperfections on the edges. Then I'll hit Enter on Windows, Return on the Mac to commit the changes. I'll select the Move tool to not accidentally crop the image as I'm working. Next, you will need to desaturate the layer, but you don't want to apply the destructive adjustment. So to keep things editable, right click on the layer and select Convert to Smart Object and do that for both layers. A smart object is simply a container that holds one or more layers and you can apply adjustments, distortions, filters and transformations non-destructively. So with the first smart object selected, I'm going to go into image, adjustment, black and white. I'll press OK, and I'll do the same thing for the second layer. Image, adjustments, black and white, and I'll press OK. So now I have two black and white smart objects, which is exactly what I want. The next step is to create the blend and we're going to create the blend with the layer style window. We're going to use the same technique that I used to create the VHS effect in a previous tutorial. If you haven't seen that, I'll place a link down below in the description. So double click to the side of the layer to open the layer style window. Then in the advanced blending options, we're going to use these three checkboxes under channel RGB 
red, green, and blue. You can think of channels as light sources, and these light sources are emitting light in the color of that channel. So if I uncheck any one of these boxes, I'll turn off the light. If I uncheck R for red, I will blend the two images and the only visible colors will be red and cyan. The answer number two, which is the layer on top, the layer with her arm in front of her face will become cyan. And that's because the opposite of red is cyan. If I uncheck this green checkbox, then she will become magenta because magenta is the opposite of green. If I uncheck the blue box, then she'll become yellow because yellow is the opposite of blue. What if you want to make the layer in the back, the layer with her arm behind her on top? What if you want to make that cyan? What do you do? Well, you can check the red box and uncheck the other two. That will make the layer in the back cyan, the one with her arm on top, and everything else red. In my case, I think that cyan in the front looks best, so I'll uncheck red and check the other two boxes. And obviously you can do the same thing for the other channels if you want to get the opposite color. It's up to you to decide what looks best. Then you can just simply press OK. I'm going to collapse these layers just so that we can see what we're working with. And what we're going to do now is adjust the blend. You can adjust the blend by creating a new levels adjustment layer. I'm going to click on this icon to clip it to the layer below. Clipping a layer means that the levels adjustment layer will only affect the layer directly below it and not any other layer. And now with the levels adjustment layer, you can adjust how the image blends. If you make the image darker, it will bring in more red. Or if you make the image brighter, it'll bring in more cyan. So now you can just adjust these points to get the result that you want. Just like anything else in Photoshop, this effect is subjective, so just make it look good to your eye. Next, you can create a hue and saturation adjustment layer, and with this adjustment layer you can do so many things. For example, you can click and drag on the hue slider, which will shift the hues of the colors of the image. And since both colors in our image are complementary, when we shift the hues, the resulting colors will also be complementary. So you can experiment with other color combinations to see if you find a better result. You can also use the saturation slider to change the saturation of the entire image and the lightness slider to control the brightness. Now let me show you another way of doing this that offers way more control. I'll reset the adjustment layer by clicking on this icon and I'm going to target individual colors. I'm going to click on this drop down and I'll select reds and then I can adjust the hue of the red by itself without affecting anything else. And I can adjust its saturation and its lightness. So you can adjust it accordingly until you find something that works for your image. Next, I'm going to adjust the cyan because that's the other color in this image. And again, I can shift the hue and adjust the saturation or lightness. Once you made all the adjustments and you're happy with your results, make sure that you select the layer on top, hold shift and click on the layer on the bottom to select everything, then right click and select convert to smart object. Now we can treat this as a single image and we can go into filter, camera raw filter, and we can use these tonal controls. For example, we can give the image more contrast, reduce the shadows to make the image a little bit darker increase the texture, maybe even a little bit of clarity, which adds contrast and edge pixels. And I can also go into this icon here, which is the effects tab. And from here, I can zoom in and I can add some grain to make it more grungy. Right click and select fit and view. And I can add a vignette to the image. Another thing that you should consider doing is going into this icon, which is a split toning, and you can add a hue to the shadows or to the highlights. In this case, I'm just gonna add this bluish cyan color to the shadows and increase the saturation. And I'm actually gonna go into the HSL adjustments and also increase the saturation of the oranges just to make that orange pop a little more. And I'll press okay. And this is my result. Let me know down in the comments below if you found this tutorial useful. 
If you enjoyed it, don't forget to click on that like button and share it with a friend. Also, if this is your first time at the Photoshop Training Channel, then don't forget to click on that subscribe and notification button so that you don't miss any new Photoshop tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again in the next video.